Well, praise the Lord. Welcome once again to the Life of Excellence. This is Jay Hurt, Senior Lead Minister of New Life 313 International Ministries. And we are excited to have you with us today. It's going to be a good day. It's a good day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know the rest of the words. But I am glad that you're here and are being a part of the Life of Excellence. We want to encourage you today. And I hope and pray that you will be blessed and encouraged by what you hear and by what God is speaking to your life today. Because today we're going to talk about vision. And before we do, though, I want to say this. I am so grateful to all of our hero partners who stand with us every single every single week. Thank you for our monthly hero partners. Hallelujah. From across the United States, thank you for being a hero partner. That's what keeps us putting these programs out and, and bringing forth this ministry. If you'd like to become a hero partner, go to newlife313.life, newlife313.life. Go there, hallelujah, and become a hero partner with us. Just click on the donate button and click on hero and reoccurring. Whatever you want to give. Become a hero partner. Try it one year and see if God doesn't bless you and God doesn't minister to you. I know you will be encouraged by it. But today I want to talk to you about vision. Now I'm standing in the lobby of the ministry center here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, what is the ministry center? It's not church. We're, we're not here to start a church. We're here to bring revival and to line up alongside those who have the hunger and desire for revival. Over to my right over here is where the uh, worship center is. And, and that's where we can see about a hundred people during our services and when we're not in revivals we have services here we have miracle services revivals teaching conferences women's conferences all type of healing and prophetic conferences and we want you to be a part of it if you're ever in the Tulsa Oklahoma area come and visit us you can find all the information at newlife313.life but right over here not too far from my right here is a welcome area and and then the welcome area our guests can have coffee and and before service no, nothing to drink in the worship center please we want to reverence uh, they can sit down and just fellowship with each other and behind me are some of the offices that we began to build and and our, our bookstore that we're building is to my left and as far as the studio but where I'm at right now the lobby the entrance it's about I don't know about 40 feet long maybe 30 feet long and 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 we have the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant was built uh, for our ministry by Sister, uh, designed and built by Sister Dolores Hale. And, and, and I told her my vision almost 20 years ago about an ark as a pulpit. And her and her husband, God bless them, built this for our ministry. And it's been a blessing. And inside this ark right here, the Ark of the Testament, uh, or the testimony as the Bible says, sometimes it's called the Ark of the Testimony, that there is prayer requests from all of the United States and here in also the there is soil from, from uh, 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 the Holy Land brought back by Reverend Troy Ivey that I, I put in there many, many years ago. And we want to put your prayer request in here. And we, we take them out periodically and put them in a box and, and make sure we write on there what year they were. But we keep them in here for a long time because we want you to know that we are praying for you. But this was part of our vision. It was part of the vision to have an Ark of the Covenant, an Ark of the Testimony in, in our ministry to be seen. See, the Word of God, hallelujah, is a powerful vision motivator, <laughs> I guess you could say. And I'm going to talk to you today about vision for a little bit. Before we do, though, I, I want to offer you something, and I hope you'll be blessed by it. It's a brand new study guide called How to Have True Revival. This was a book I wrote many years ago, but I have went in personally and updated it and put all types of uh, uh, test uh, questions and test answers in every chapter. There. It went from just about a 30-page book um, uh, to 55 pages. I want you to have this. Write to us today at newlife313.life. Go on there. Write to us here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I want you, if you become a partner with us, I want to sow this into your life free. I just want you to have it. But become a partner with us, whatever amount you want to sow every month. But it takes vision to have revival. 
Pastors have to have vision. I, I called the pastor one time and, and, and I was in his area. I said, hey, brother, I'm going to be in your area. I said, I'd like to come and have revival. And he, I, I said, you told me to call you if I'm in the area. And he said, oh, brother, this is an answer to prayer. I've been praying for revival. I said, well, I have this date open. And it was about 10 days from where, uh, the date I called him. And he said, oh, praise God. I'm going to talk with people, see what they think, and I'll get back with you. I said, well, brother, I have another guy that I, I, I may end up going. He said, no, no, let me, I've been praying for revival, but let me just see what the people think. Well, a week went by, I didn't ever hear it from him, so I was already scheduled, and I went to another place. Well, he called our offices, and he was asking, he said, well, you know, I prayed about it, and I want Brother Jay to come and have revival. And, 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 and the lady said, well, you know, uh, he's already booked. And she said, or uh, he said, well, why did he book? I told him I'd call him back. And, and she said, I know, but that's been t about 10 days ago, almost a, a little over a week ago. And he had to have that meeting while he was in your area. And he said, well, I don't understand why he did that. Well, this is the reason. If you're praying for a revival and you're believing God for revival and an evangelist calls you and says, hey, I have the days you've been praying about for revival. You don't need to go. Well, let me talk to my church. Let me talk to the elders. Let me talk to my 10 closest friends and see. if No, that's an answer to your prayer. And so many people don't understand vision. The Bible says w w without a vision, people perish. God doesn't want you to perish. God wants you to have a vision for your life. He wants you to have a vision. I, I like what Pastor George Pearson says. He was quoting Miles Monroe, a powerful man of God uh, who went to be with the Lord some years ago. But Pastor George Pearson of Kenneth Copeland uh, Ministries, he's the uh, chief uh, executive officer as him and his wife are the pastor of the church there, Eagle Mountain. And he said, God had a vision and a purpose, but he waited for you to be born to fulfill it, is what he said, Miles Monroe said. And when I heard that, I thought, wow, God does have a purpose. Like when I gave the vision of this ark to Sister Dolores Hale and her, and she, she in turn gave the vision to her husband, and he began to work on it. Now, her husband didn't go to church. He wasn't what you would say a dedicated Christian. But because he caught the vision of a preacher who wanted the ark of the covenant as the pulpit. Now, at one time it had plexiglass on top, and it had holders on the side and you could lay your Bible on it. But we had a, a storm come through and, and it knocked down some rope and broke the, the plexiglass. But I'm glad it was on there because it protected the angels. But see, I had a vision and I shared it with Sister Dolores and she in turn shared it with her husband. And then in turn, we shared it with the whole body of believers during our service and our leaders when we brought it in. I mean, we had the show part. We did a big presentation. But the vision came to pass. But it took a few months. I shared it with her and then I asked her a few days later she said yeah my husband's looking at it. I said okay and then it just went another week, another month about two, two and a half months and all of a sudden I, I, I had the vision in front of me. See that's what it takes for you to be consistent in your faith. Consistent in knowing that the vision is going to come to pass. Oh glory to God I'm speaking to somebody today. We have a vision here. Where we are at right now is where we're starting not where we're staying. We're thankful for this property. This is phase one. We, we want to purchase all of the property, get it all cleaned up, but we have other property we're looking at. Other property that we're already reaching out. We go over there and we pray over it. And we have a vision. We talk about over here we're going to redo this building because this building uh, has been condemned because of a, a, a structure and the, and the floor, but we're going to redo it. The, over here we're going to build this. Over here we're going to build And we set the vision before our eyes. Because without a vision, people perish. Now, beloved of God, where we are at right now, it's a house. Yeah, it is. But, but that's where they started most of the churches in the book of Acts, in a house. And you know, beloved of God, hallelujah, right outside, behind here, behind those in the camera and those with the camera and stuff, and behind the camera itself, we, we have a, a, a parking area for about 30 cars, I guess, maybe a few more. And then on the top level, for about eight cars, comfortably, maybe 10. And, and people can walk in through a courtyard. That, that courtyard 
courtyard is beautiful. You come through these beautiful iron gates and you walk through the court. And the word of God says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And the vision, when you walk in, hallelujah, you begin to see it uh, seen. We have a hospitality room that we're preparing for our guest ministers and our guest speakers. And we're seeing it. Uh, 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 unravel, if you will, open up, unfold, excuse me, not unravel. Uh, God, we don't want it to unravel. We want it to unfold. But the vision is coming to pass. And see, so many of us, we pray for a vision. We pray for God to go, uh, do it. And then when we don't see it, we get discouraged. I'm reminded in Acts, the 12th chapter. And, and, and in fact, it's, it's a powerful illustration in Acts, the 12th chapter. Oh, I forgot to make our statement of faith. Oh, Lord, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I will be what it says I can be. I will do what it says I can do. I will have what it says I can have. And I will apply it to my life. Whoa, glory to God. Man, I feel better now. Somebody said, well, brother, you're halfway through your message. You took a long time. Oh, I know it. But you know what? Better late than never. Vision unfolding. There you go. Look, look what it says right here. In Acts, thank you, Holy Spirit. I opened up right to it. Acts, the 12th chapter. I love this. Peter is in prison. And, 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 and he's being surrounded uh, uh, by, by uh, uh, guards. They're, they're, they're all over. And look what it says. It says these words in verse 6 of, of chapter 12. And when Herod would have brought him forth that same night, Peter was asleep between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison. And he was surrounded, had changed, and then he had people in front of him that, hallelujah, they were, they were uh, um, uh, uh, watching the doors. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and light shined and Peter and it hit Peter on his side and said, rise up. And his chains fell off of him. And he said, gird thyself up and gird thyself and cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And, and, and it says, and he went out, followed him and did not know that it was true, which was by the angel. But Peter thought he saw a vision. He thought he was just dreaming. He, and then it says, when he finally got to the outer gate, he realized this thing is coming to pass. This thing is true. It's happening what I'm seeing. See, beloved of God, sometimes our vision, when it starts to happen, we're like, oh, this, ain't, this is not it because I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't expect it to unfold like that. I didn't expect it for, to be materialized. I thought something else would happen. And Peter almost missed the vision of the, the uh, I mean, excuse me, uh, it missed uh, uh, the freedom that he was having because he thought, oh, I'm just having a vision. Some of you have had a vision and, and you're walking and you're seeing things and you're not understanding. But God's saying, I'm leading you to the right gate. <laughs> I'm leading to you the vision. See, the word of God says, hallelujah, write the vision, make it plain so that they who read it may run with it, that they who run may run with it. See, don't be like Peter and wait till you get to the outside of the gate to realize, wait a minute, I am free. See, he thought it was just a vision. Some of you have been told, oh, that's just a vision. It'll never come to pass. Yes, it will. Because God's about to send an angel. And that angel's going to smack you on the side of your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that angel's going to say, get up. Let's get to the vision. God's going to fulfill it. Destiny delayed is not, oh, glory to God. I'm speaking to somebody. You say, you're speaking to yourself. Yes, I am. I'm speaking to you too. Destiny delayed is not destiny denied. One of my mentors poured that into me. Uh, and, and I know that's a familiar saying, but he poured it into me. I'd hear him say it in the pulpit. I'd hear him say it at lunch. I'd hear him say it when we're walking. Destiny delayed is not destiny denied. Oh, hallelujah. I'm here today to tell you, God's about to unfold the vision for you. You're going to walk out the last gate and you're going to go, this is real. See, Peter was like, this can't be happening. This must be a vision. And until he got to the outside and then he realized it wasn't a vision. It was real. And the old oh, glory to God. Then he went on to the, the house where the people were praying for him to be set free. They were praying for him. And when he comes to the door, he walks to the outer court. Just like I said, we have here at the worship center. He walks to the outer court. For I shall even bring the vision to pass, which is burned within your heart. You shall know that I have done it. I shall give you increase 
I shall allow it to come upon you and overtake you, and you will know that I have done it this day. I have spoken through you. I have spoken it out into the atmosphere, and I shall have it created, and your vision will live. Lord, I thank you for that word. Hallelujah. God's speaking right now. Hallelujah. You said, what just happened? I just felt the spirit of God. Speak out of my spirit. Hallelujah. The vision's going to live. That's not only for new life. That's for you. That's not only for Jay and Connie Hurt. That's for you. That's not just for Troy and Mary Ivy and Louisa McConnell and, and Elena Marie, the leaders of this ministry. It's for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're about to come through to your vision. Hallelujah. The chains are coming off. The, the, the gates that, and the doors that have been hindering you and those that have been around you just holding you back. It's all going to change. Glory to God. You're about to come out. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. And God is going to answer you. God is going to strengthen you. God is going to uplift you. God is going to help you in the name of Jesus. When Peter came to the gate, he banged on the door and a little girl by the name of Rhoda ran over there and she said, who is it? He said, it's Peter. Open the door. And, 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 and even though she recognized his voice, she took off and where the people were praying for the, uh, Peter to be de uh, delivered from the prison uh, uh, chains, she came and said, Peter's at the door. And look what they said. No, he's not. That's his angel. No, it was the fulfillment of the vision. They almost missed the fulfillment of the vision. Peter realized it. Peter could have went to another house and said, I'm going to John's house. These people are great. I'm going somewhere else. But he kept on knocking. Your vision is knocking. Open that door. The, the, the chains that have been holding it are, are, are broken off. Those that have been sitting around you saying it will never happen like the guards that were around Peter. God's removing them. Your vision is going to live. The vision is going to thrive. It's not just going to live. It's going to thrive. It's not going to survive. It's going to thrive. Say it with me. My vision shall live and not die, it will not just survive, it will thrive. Oh, say it again. My vision will live and not die. It will not just survive. It will thrive. Every bill will be paid. Every person that you've been believing God for will be there. Every person you've been believing God to remove are going to be removed. That property you want, just like we are in phase one and in phase two, it's coming up. God's going to give it to you. That house, that job. Hallelujah. You need to go to your job and envision yourself running the whole department, not just working for somebody. You need to, preacher, envision your ministry exploding. Ha <laughs> ha. That one in the sick bed, envision yourself getting a clear report and coming out and never being sick again. If you're in prison and somebody just happened to let you watch this, get yourself ready. God will forgive you. He'll wash you white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, blood red, He'll wash you white as snow and you're going to come out and you're going to use that prison testimony to bring somebody else out glory to God I could shout out. let me just there. ow like James Brown said I feel good glory to God vision God wants you to live God wants you to be strong God wants your vision not only to live but thrive not survive but thrive Peter said I'm at the door he himself thought he was just having a vision, a dream. But then the vision came alive. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. When Nehemiah went to the city to rebuild the walls that had lain in ruin for 70 years, the Bible says this, that he began to go throughout all the rubble at night. And he told nobody he was there. And he saw what needed to be done. But he, where everybody else saw burnt rubble, broken down walls, no foundation, Nehemiah said, I see a wall. I see it. And he so inspired the people that in 52 days, they built, rebuilt the wall that ended up laying for 70 years. They built the wall for those in the city and out of the city. What a great, great thing God is doing. Oh, beloved of God, I hope this blessed you. See, hallelujah. I like what Miles Monroe said. God waited for you to be born into this world to complete the vision through you. Every one of you has a vision. Every one of you has something inside of you God's been trying to use. But see what has happened? The devil has corrupted it. He's made the vision for evil. The, the, the vision. I, I, I heard of an actor 
many years ago and he carried around a piece of paper when he was really just beginning unknown i will make 10 million dollars every film i will make 10 million dollars every film and and he just walked around with it when he was barely on tv when he was barely uh, in uh, the backup in a film and all of a sudden he made 10 million but then he succeeded that he made 20 25 million see beloved of god you've got to set it before your mind set it before your eyes and believe it in your heart whatever you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that lord jesus you'll be saved same uh, uh, principle goals for your vision let me pray for you maybe you're a minister or maybe you're somebody who's wanting to start a business or maybe you've been struggling god is going to bring that vision to pass now God's already spoken. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak vision, life. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. I speak vision, life, life to their vision. Let it live. Let it grow. And God, let it even surprise them and let it be greater than they ever thought. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Go to newlife313.life. If you're there already, watching us there, or if you're watching on one of the social media channels, we thank you. Connect with New Life 313 International Ministries. Connect with me and the ministry team. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests. Connect with us. Receive our e-letters every single week. We want you to have them to encourage you. We'll go and find out what's going on in the ministry, and I know you'll be blessed. This is Jay Hurd, Senior Lead Minister of New Life 313 International Ministries. I'm so excited to share this with you and i hope it encouraged you i hope that your vision is coming back to life whether you're a preacher uh, a lay person whether you clean the church whether you just started at a job or just started a new business or, or your body has just come through a health problem get ready your vision is going to live see yourself healthy blessed strong victorious and a breakthrough hallelujah coming in your life until next time because of you we continue to rebuild lives restore hope renew vision and you have purpose god bless